Income and wealth levels are largely determined by birth. If you do not have the right start in life, adequate shelter and location, good quality healthcare and education, and parents with well-paying jobs, then you will likely live in poverty. Moving from poverty to the middle class is like winning the lotto. Nine out of 10 South Africans' earnings are determined by what their parents earned. A person raised by top earning parents is 70% more likely to be a top earner. Whether you work at all, how much you earn, and whether your work is adequately valued, these are questions determined by the labor market. The report focuses on four segments of the labor market, unpaid care, precarious, informal work, and unemployed people. Mining-related industries, energy-related industries, and the financial sector, known as the Minerals and Energy Complex, or MEC, dominate an economic system that benefits the rich. This system reinforces privilege, including male, upper class, and white privilege, denying the vast majority of people, particularly black women, the right to dignified work. This structure reinforces male privilege because the MEC allocates the bulk of well-paying jobs to men. Black women work mostly in underpaid service jobs. The system depends on women bearing the burden of unpaid care work. Care work that benefits the economy because it helps people get ready for work. Women's unpaid care work burden is an obstacle for those who would seek paid work. The wealthiest 10% who control the economic system depend on this free or underpaid labor done mostly by black women. The wages they pay workers do not count the billions of hours of unpaid care work. The structure benefits the very rich because economic financialization means that rich people can make a lot of their money by betting on stock markets or the exchange rate. That means less money is available for productive activities which would actually create jobs. The economic system is dominated by a handful of companies who conspire with one another, receive government support, and exclude the informal sector. These companies started in the colonial or apartheid era and are seen as too big to fail by the government. The structure reinforces white privilege because young black women between 18 and 34 years old with a university degree earn 24% less than a similarly qualified white woman. White men and women with no matric have better median incomes than black women with matric. Things don't change because government accepted neoliberal policies such as trade liberalization, privatization, inflation targeting, and budget austerity. These policies were being pushed hard by institutions like the IMF in the 1990s and have failed to create equitable growth. By forcing South African firms to compete with more developed companies abroad, trade liberalization makes it very hard to create more and better jobs, especially for women and young people. Privatization has taken public firms which should be accountable for the public interest and made them accountable only to profits. Inflation targeting has made it difficult for businesses to invest in job-creating industries because banks are more concerned with the value of their money than with ensuring that there is enough money available to create good jobs. And budget austerity has meant insufficient public investment on job creation strategies and increased the burden of unpaid care work on women due to poor service delivery. Failing to protect workers and providing dignified work. While government increased basic worker protections after the end of apartheid, employers in the private and public sectors have sidestepped these regulations and pushed down wages through outsourcing. Suppressing informal sector workers. Government and corporate practices Keep informal traders from accessing markets. Police harassment and stigmatizing of informal workers has become routine. Failing to support small and women's businesses. Policies to develop industries are skewed towards industries where the labor force is dominated by men. Funding for women-owned businesses is limited, so even when good jobs are created, they are going disproportionately to men political and corporate capture of the state. Schemes that were designed to empower black workers and black owned businesses in remote areas have been expanded and misused. Politicians, civil servants, local contractors and subcontractors are all implicated. Political and corporate capture has become the norm. 
Oxfam's report recommends a range of interventions that aim to put at the center right to dignified work. One, living wage and a cap on maximum income. Two, implement a package of progressive macroeconomic policies targeting employment. Three, fiscal tax justice so rich pay fair share. Four, tackling political and corporate capture by professionalizing the civil service. Five, gender accountable and just budgeting and planning. Six, recognize, reduce, redistribute unpaid work through public service investment and care workers be represented in policy decision making. Seven, implement industrial policy that prioritize the creation of more and better jobs for women. Eight, Force labor protections for democratic, safe, and fair workspaces. Nine, reserve labor reforms that attack working class organizing. 10, social protections, fair, safe access to markets for the informal sector. 11, social protections for all.